morning. And welcome back everybody. And if you're new to the channel, please allow me to welcome you uh, and uh, give you a quick rundown on what we got going on. So yes, this is an F4 Phantom right behind me. It's the last flyable F4 in the United States. Um, one common question that I do get to see is this, this is not a restoration. Uh, she's always been flyable. She last flew in 2019. We're trying to complete the annual inspection so she can go back up into the sky. But right now we're dealing with an electrical system problem and a leaky right main strut, which our seals came in today and they're going through and making sure we got everything laid out properly in order to uh, put the uh, strut back together. And then we can uh, bring her down and test that. Awesome, we got some other fun stuff going on today besides the F4. We got an aircraft that we got to move today that uh, isn't heavily featured on the channel. It's our T-33. Uh, it's a trainer aircraft, uh, really old. And um, we got a special event that that has to go out onto the ramp for today. So we'll be moving that here shortly. Uh, I'm going to shift gears a little bit today. And we got a dog that I got to um, get working again. Or actually stopping. It's our... Uh, it's our heavy tug that has a bad brake issue. You're right here. Oh, ouch. So, right, yeah, there. This little guy right here, the brake master cylinder, failed on us last year. And well, we have a replacement finally. And I gotta change that. This is our heavy tug. This one actually has, it, it weighs more than the other tug that looks just like this. And it's got a much more robust drivetrain for uh, pulling aircraft versus uh, pulling some uh, baggage trailers like at an airport. So, all right, let me uh, get rolling on this. That's one loose. Excellent. I don't know who put a half hit. Maybe that is right, but I don't know. <coughs> One bed, brake master cylinder. Yeah. You mind find can I have one of those rags? Don't take the boot off. Brake fluid. We got some dripping out of there. Hop in the seat, please. Now, right here. Gently push down the brake. Gently and slowly push down the brake pedal. Yep, we're getting some air bubbles coming up. All right, keep going. Boom. All right, bring it back up. Alrighty, so I got the bleeder on it, which is this plate right here, coming up to this pressure tank that is filled with brake fluid. And if you've never seen one of these before, this is a power bleeder, and or pressure bleeder. And what it does is it squirts brake fluid under pressure into your system, which makes it way easier to bleed all the brakes. And if you've never done this kind of work before, uh, you do not want any air in the brake lines. So I'll put the arrow on the screen, but uh, each wheel has a brake caliper, much like this one. And there's little bleeder screws on them at the high points in the system so that you can get the air out and just have fluid in the system. Because if there's any air bubbles, especially if there's a significant amount of air, the air will compress whenever you push the brake pedals, which gives you a very spongy feeling. And then the brakes don't work properly if they work at all, which is what happened. So what we had happen last year was a brake caliper fell apart. And then when that happened, the brake pedal went to the floor, which on this old 
brake cylinder here, the piston that's inside it that travels down this tube um, had some seals on it, just like any any ordinary piston would, and it went past the point where junk tends to build up in the in, at the back of the bore, and it ruined the seals inside this one. So even though we replaced the uh, the calipers in the back, this could never have brakes again until now. So let me get this contraption off of here, and let's take it for a test drive. We had to go grab the other tug. There's still some air in that other one. That the pedal's feeling all sorts of weird. Still some more troubleshooting to go. I know. Yep, grab the chocks, there you go. Oh yeah, close up of the Miss Piggy. Oh yeah. The Noah Noah 43. Weather tornado research. Is it? Yeah. Is that the hurricane hunter? Yeah, it really does tornadoes and hurricane man. Interesting. It's got a it's She is looking much, much, much better. Oh, that up there. This was the airplane that Jack was just talking about a moment ago. The, uh, I guess this is a tornado chaser. It's an old P3 that's, uh, that uh, Noah uses for uh, chasing tornadoes. I guess her name is Miss Piggy. Oh yeah, check that out. Nose art. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Nice. Nice. Cool. Well, this is mildly embarrassing. We just ran out of diesel fuel in the tug on the way back. Now on the happy note, we did run out of fuel on the other side of the red line, which we only had permission just to bring it over, to, uh, bring the T-33 over there. So we crossed the line and made it over here. <laughs> oh, slightly embarrassing. Hang on. That just sounds empty. Hey, we got two inches of fuel in the bottom of the tank. <laughs> well, we know where the usable fuel stops. That's an A4. That's a big engineer. Man, just love hearing those big engines.
imagine that Jet Jared uh, flying that one. I'll leave a link to his channel down below. To the rescue! Chief Hal's over there, he's charging up the air because he's wanting to take a look at that rear cockpit strut because that was leaking. We got the tugs over here and we put a few gallons of the, in the tank. I'm going to try to bleed the injector lines, which is not the most funnest job on a diesel. All right, so here's what we've got going on here. Here's the four injectors for the, for the engine. You've got to crack the injector lines and get the air out of them. Just enough and once they start squirting fuel out you close them off and the engine should start but you just got to get get it to that point where you got air uh, all the air out of the injector lines so let's see what we got See, they're starting to drip. That's good. So now we close them off. And ideally, the engine should start the next time I do this, once I tighten all these fittings down. There we go. Two, three, and four. All right. Here we go. Nope. All right, I'm gonna keep working at this. All right, another round of that. Looks like she's uh, she's wanting to go. So let's try it out. Try again. Oh no, the battery's dead. Crap. No. All right, so here's what we got going on electrically. Ground power TR, generator switch panel which is right here. Oh, that's the right way. Nope, I had it right. It's this way. So, that's the master caution reset, I'm pretty sure. This is your left-hand gen out, right-hand gen out, bus tie open, warning lights. 
here's the here's where the toggle switches are and they both go down in order to engage the ground power when it's available what we just found out is this blue one here for the left hand switch is not functioning so we gotta change out the switch it still doesn't explain why it's popping the fuse because if it's not passing current over to the AC power box why is it popping the fuse so something to look into further we're still we're still working on this but here's yet another small problem but yeah this this switch went bad it's not it, the contacts have worn out on it dare i say this might be in another original piece too but we don't know we'll keep plugging our way at it now what we're also doing is verifying that we have we all of our strut parts came over we're just inventorying and cataloging them all to make sure that we have every single piece that we have that we need in order to put the strut back together all right so i put the battery charger on this in the hope that maybe it's just a low battery keeping the starter from engaging so we'll see how that goes um so this is the t33 hanger uh what we like to call our parts storage as well and um if you're curious the t33 while on paper it could theoretically fly her engine's right there so that was in the middle of an overhaul, I believe, and I don't know what its disposition is at this point. So, T33 may never fly again, I don't know. The, uh, you got other trailers and equipment back here. That is a start cart in what I think is an old drop tank. That's actually a start cart, uh, one that we can fly with to airfields. Uh, usually that gets hung on the belly station and then once we get to once, well, once the jet ends up at the airfield that comes off so they can fly for an air show as, as my understanding works and then once they're ready to depart after the week after the air show weekend that gets rehung and that gets uh that goes with the airplane next more drop tanks even though we're not allowed to drop the drop tanks anymore some of you guys may recognize this. That is a J79. Uh, that is not a running engine. That is a parts engine for us at this point. But that is a J79. That's what goes in a Phantom. I'll do a little piece on that one of these days. There's a cowling of an A26. Got some other stuff up on the shelves here. Some of you weapons guys may recognize this. This is what we call a jammer. And that is what loads... Uh, stores underneath aircraft. This can handle bombs, missiles, um, tanks. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a self-propelled weapon floater. As my understanding goes, this needs a little bit of work in order to run again, but otherwise it it works just fine. All right, so. I'm going to let this charge overnight. I will be back tomorrow to do some stuff. So that means you guys are going to get a midweek video. So something to look forward to uh, probably around Wednesday or so. Uh, this one I'm going to put on jacks. Take all the wheels off and get to all the brake bleeders and continue working on the brakes. I am really close to getting this thing functional. So let's see, how, let's see what I can do with this. Because we got to get the T33 back tomorrow. So one of these tugs needs to go. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you next time.